This week on TGC News, Tracking Point gets hacked, USA One Shot is still not an NFA item, and Taurus is still junk. Check out Savoie Leather for some of the most badass leather holsters around. You can pick from hundreds of different designs, and the choices for gun and carry style combos are almost endless. To get free shipping on your next order, use the code TGC1 at SavoieLeather.com. Welcome back. My name is John Patton, and this week's first story is rather affirming for me. But before we get to that, if you guys want to see me shoot this four-inch barreled 5.56 pistol, roundhouse that like button to let me know. Now, I've been saying for years that Taurus makes junk firearms. I've seen far too many of them go back to the factory or just fall apart on the range. And now, they're settling a class action lawsuit for defective guns that will cost them $39 million. Yes, you heard me right. $39 million. <laughs> the case was filed by a Scott County, Iowa deputy sheriff named Chris Carter, and he stated that the handguns in question have a faulty drop safety and the guns could fire when dropped even if the manual safety was engaged. The guns listed in the case are the PT-111 Millennium, PT-132 Millennium, PT-138 Millennium, PT-140 Millennium, PT-145 Millennium, PT-745 Millennium, PT-609, PT-640, and PT-247. And that is a lot of trash. According to the suit, Taurus has known about these defects since 2007 and has even settled prior cases for unintentional discharges before, which is absolutely disgraceful. I also highly doubt they'll see the money, but allegedly every owner of one of these guns is supposed to receive between $150 to $200 as part of the settlement. Yeah, good luck with that one. I think the worst part about this is that it's a breakdown of trust. The people that bought these guns trusted Taurus to make good firearms and trusted the people that sold the guns to them to not sell them junk. If you own one of these guns and are getting involved in this suit, please let us know what ends up happening. And in Hack the Planet news, tracking point rifles can now be exploited through their own Wi-Fi. Hacker couple Runa Sandvig and Michael Auger will be sharing their results at the Black Hat Hacker Conference this week in Las Vegas. Essentially, they found through a series of loopholes that they can tweak the calculations inside the scope to make it lie to the shooter and make them miss their target. Essentially, like a rifle that won't hold zero. They've also found ways to completely disable the gun because it relies on the scope system to actually allow the gun to fire. Now, keep in mind, when the scope system is functioning properly, the gun gun cannot be fired without a human pulling the trigger. So we're not going to see a gun uprising or something crazy like that, but this is still a primary reason why people didn't buy into these guns. Not only were they insanely expensive, but now the electronics are hackable. I say were because right now it seems like that company is going under. They actually stop shipping rifles while they do corporate restructuring and fire nearly everybody in the company. I suppose this was bound to happen, but it's still a shame because the concept has so much potential. Last week we talked about a new product that was going to be a thorn in the ATF side called the USA One Shot, and you can actually watch that story right here. Now, we were the first to break the story on the USA One Shot, and since then, a lot more good information has come out that we wanted to share with you guys. Like we mentioned, the company Accurate Pistol Systems is saying that the ATF technology brands will not give them a determination letter because the product does not fall under their jurisdiction. They're claiming that it falls under the same classification as shooting sticks or ransom rests that don't actually attach to the gun. Initially, I was calling BS on that claim because there's virtually no evidence otherwise. Well, combined with an article on Recoil Web and some company videos that have come out, it's pretty clear that they're not full of it. However, the biggest issue here is that the ATF flip-flops more than a politician at election time, and that this is far and away the biggest concern here. I wouldn't want to spend the MSRP of 350 bucks on this thing and then have the ATF say, sorry about your luck, this thing's now illegal. My stance is that the product seems really interesting and actually effective, but without proof that it won't get screwed by a three-letter agency for owning the thing, I'm not going to buy one. Would you guys actually buy this? Let me know in the comments down below. This week's Friendly Fire question is from my good friend Mrs. Whitey on Instagram, and she asks, 
how do I get more comfortable around guns? And I think that's a great question because a lot of newer shooters and people that spend time with gun enthusiasts are probably wondering the same thing. My number one answer is to go out and shoot. Go to the range, go with your friends, maybe go with a significant other, or even by yourself. I guarantee that you're gonna find something along the way that you enjoy shooting. And maybe it's a big Barrett, like a 50 cal, or maybe it's a suppressed 22 pistol. There's something out there that you are gonna love, and it's about that journey to find that thing. And not for nothing, at the end of the day, you could also go and shoot sporting clays or even go to a handgun competition once you've got the safety basics down and really kick the fun up to another level. So that's what I think you can do to get more comfortable around guns. My friendly fire question to you guys at home is really simple this week. I wanna know where you're from. I know we've got people all over the world watching this show, so I wanna know in the comments down below, where do you guys live? If you want your question answered right here on the show, you can post that on facebook.com slash the gun collective or post it on Instagram and Twitter using hashtag friendly fire. Newsflash, announcement, this just in, extra, extra, hear all about it. <laughs> Seriously though, I want to share something really cool with you guys. You can now watch The Gun Collective on one of the best gun websites on the entire internet, Full30.com. For those of you that don't know, Full30 is a site dedicated to bringing the best gun content to shooting enthusiasts worldwide from a collection of the best creators around. It'd be freaking awesome to see you guys over there, and hey, if you're already watching this on Full30, then I love you big much. That is it for this week's show. Guys, if you enjoyed the episode, you know what to do. And if you didn't, let me know down in the comments so we can talk about it. Do not forget to subscribe because you won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, guys, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Hungry for more? Check out last week's episode right there. And then check out the one before that. And definitely don't forget to subscribe.